What is it, good viewers? My name is BBK Dragoon. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use XSplit to stream console games like Halo 4 to Twitch.tv and HD. I'm going to be as quick as I can because, hey, tutorials are better fast, right? So here we are in XSplit, but we're first going to open up our web browser and we're going to make a test account. Something I can really want to stress here is you don't want to be testing settings on your main account. If you have any followers, you're going to really annoy your followers and piss them off. Is like every time you go live, you're just like testing settings then when you actually do want to have people show up to your broadcast not as many will do so so right now I'm using BBK Dragoon test other thing is while you're broadcasting you want to be using your dashboard you don't want to be using your channel page because that'll suck up too much bandwidth so by using the dashboard you get a smaller viewport make sure the volume is minimized or excuse me muted or all the way down otherwise you'll create a nasty feedback loop as your own audio XSplit takes your desktop audio and streams it so you can't have that audio being played yet again it just creates this big feedback loop and what I usually do is pause this to save some bandwidth make sure you're set up in the right category here we are in Halo 4 you can click update there and XSplit tutorial how to stream console I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use a Blackmagic Pro intensity for streaming, but uh, regardless of whatever your cap card is, these processes will still be the same. So here we are at XSplit. First thing we're going to want to do is go to Broadcast Edit Channels, and I'm going to go to BBK Dragoon Test and ed Edit, just because I've already got one set up. You guys will go to Add. From here you put in your username and your password, blah, 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 whatever that may be, like XYZ, or if you don't have the password, you can get a hold of the stream key from the owner of the channel. That way if you don't own the channel and you want to still stream to it, you can get a stream key from the owner and stream it there so like when I stream for Halo Zone I just have a stream key I don't know their credentials anyway uh, then you're gonna pick a location that's close to you you'll see jitters and pings and uh, all that jazz there obviously um, the lower the better next is CBR over VBR there'll be a link below to talk about this but I won't waste much time a lot of internet jargon just know CBR is much better it doesn't fluctuate as badly The problem with VB uh, the variable bit rate is the variable bit rate will settle down to a very low bit rate if there's not a lot going on on the screen like say Starcraft 2 you're like building at your base and then all of a sudden a giant fight happens and there's tons of pixel data and the computer has to think sometimes the bandwidth can't catch up and that's where streams will drop frame constant bit rate is recommended now from twitch and that article will be below I have four megabytes upload which means I use 1500 kbps as my maxed bit rate okay that's pretty important because uh, we need to leave room for my xbox any higher than 1500 is kind of overkill not kind of it's super overkill for 720p 1500 will give you a very nice looking stream remember you need to leave room for your xbox or console to be able to talk with the internet also so you even if you have like four megabytes up you can't crank that thing crazy uh, a note to streamers too who aren't partnered if you do have awesome internet please refrain from doing something silly like I want to have a 2500 or a 2300 720p stream because then all of your viewers have to have internet that meets those requirements unless you're a partner so uh, just keep that in mind next we're gonna click this little gear here left click it apply strict CBR on max keyframe default and the encoder preset I'm gonna explain this real quickly you have all these different encoders uh, it's kinda backwards super fast is for the smallest and weakest CPUs where slow is for like the fastest most insane CPUs on earth it defaults to very fast I recommend you start at very fast if you're on a laptop and you are finding that you're processor is going nuts bring it up to super fast but that looks pretty bad I'm not gonna lie the compressions the icky when there's like turning going on I set mine to faster because my rig can decently handle that remember with streaming you don't want to like crank these out of control because you're gonna probably be streaming for a long time and you don't want your computer to like melt or destroy any componentry by doing this so be smart uh, when you set this value to 1500 you'll notice XSplit will automatically set your buffer to 1500 you can sometimes set the buffer to twice Twice your uh, amount that's what I do I set it to 3000 there's an article down below explaining VBF buffers and like the max bitrate ratios for the most part I'm just gonna tell you keep it the exact same as your max bitrate that seems to work just fine as a starting point finally I switched the auto to 128 because it sounds a whole lot nicer than 96 I don't have the automatic recording turned on and the interleave audio and video in one RTMP channel is turned on test your bandwidth if you get a green light you're good to go if you get a yellow light you might be okay to go but you should probably lower your settings a bit if you get a red light you are super not good to go hit OK and hit apply um, password stream key must be specified cool um, and then we go over to general and some of these are going to be disabled that I'm going to tell you to enable you're going to want to disable arrow theme it saves processor speed I don't have it disabled because fraps has to have it um, in arrow for it to record 
I don't have a virtual camera output on just because I don't use it. Enable game source, yes. Hide from screen region, no. Uh, I turn it on when I'm actually um, streaming because sometimes I don't want people to see it and you can crash your computer sometimes with like, if XSplit is recording itself, recording itself, recording itself. Enable optimized render, yes, and Skype interaction, yes. Here you can pick your microphone. You can also set silence detection. Uh, I haven't really messed around with that too much. And then finally, a place to set up local recordings. That's the one really cool part about XSplit is if you go to the local recording channel and hit edit and you can play with the settings, you can set 128. I have mine MP4 and the quality is set to um, faster with 20 right here. So let me go back real quick to the BBK Dragoon test here. And uh, Luke, yeah, we're good. All good there. Next, uh, if we go to hotkeys over here, this is the last thing I'll show you in the settings. You can change uh, hotkeys for switching scenes, which is really uh, useful. I set mine to the number pads here, so I'm going to hit OK. Next, we're going to go to add. The way XSplit works is it's kind of like a, a poster board, and uh, you can lay images one on top of another. So first, I'm going to go to add camera, and the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, if you've installed it correctly, will show up as a camera device. Uh, then I can click add, and suddenly we are looking at a Spartan. If I right-click now anywhere on that asset or that layer, I can turn the volume down because Halo 4 is outrageously loud. I can mute it too, which is good. Uh, this little refresh button is important because if you sometimes notice that your like s audio is out of sync with the actual capture, that can help quite a bit. You can play with the color. You can play with the layout. I wouldn't mess with anything right here. You can click lock position if you don't want to accidentally move this again. That's kind of useful. Um, but from there, we're pretty much set. Now, if you don't have a black magic, or say you have a Hapog or an Elgato or something like that, what you're going to do is just open up your video recording software on your desktop so that you can actually see the video that's being recorded. Then you go add screen region, and you can either draw a box or you can actually just click, left click, on the window you want, and XSplit will just capture that window, if that makes sense. From there, you can right click it and crop it to the way you want it. So, say, um, like, if you bring in black magic I'm gonna turn the volume back down and say um, there's bars or something on my program and I want to crop it out right click go to layout and then you can crop any of the uh, sides and that's important one last thing to show you is how to add graphics I have here a uh, a PNG with my logo and social stuff on it. It's a PNG alpha layer. You can either drag and drop this into XSplit or you can do add media file and do that thing. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go layout. I'm going to crop the bottom until we start losing the image. There we go. I'm going to crop then the right side of it. So right click it again and start cropping, cropping, cropping. We're just getting the edges really tight here so we can stick it in a corner. And now we've got the edges tight. I can make it small. Big, I can then like put it over in a corner, make it oops, there we go. Here, huge, that's way too big. Um, but pretty simple, right? Very easy. Let's jump to a different scene. And here we have another blank scene. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll make a splash page like this, a single image that has some of my social stuff on it, and then I can go add a camera again for the black magic, resize this any way I want and happy dory right very cool one last thing i want to show you guys is a title trick that's pretty cool oh also if you hold down the shift key while um clicking on any ass asset you can play with its 3d functionality which is i, I think kind of cool i've never used it but it, it'll eat up more process remember that to get rid of it just right click go to 3d hit reset okay and then last but not least if you go to add and title if you don't have title you can go to more sources and find title there uh, more sources has some cool little things you can add so add title and let's say I want to say um, follow at BBK well that's already on there I halo zone right say I want to promote their Twitter or something like that if I select this yeah cool got it all good and then I put scrolling enabled and hit OK we get this really cool scrolling text, which is nice. But notice, like, it's uh, it's looping pretty rapidly, like, too often. Like, I don't want it to go this fast. A quick trick is you just go back to title, configure, and then if you add a bunch of spaces, if I just hold down the space bar and add, like, a ton of spaces, it is going to basically 
as you can logically assume, it's going to slow the text down and it's going to, you know, not spam your one text line over and over again. From there you can go file, save presentation and open this up for later every time you're streaming, which is good. Microphone settings here, um, XSplit will pick up the desktop audio, so if you want to play music, you can play music through there. Other than that, you guys should be set to go. Um, one of the things that I will leave in the description too is... Uh, this, which is a chart that will help you figure out it, what your upload speed is and then what your uh, processor is, cross-reference it with the correct settings. The one thing I will say is it tells you variable bit rates instead of constant bit rates. Um, just substitute the constant bit rate for the variable bit rate. I hope that helped you guys out. If you have questions, ask me below. I'm not a big streamer, but I've been doing this for about a year now. If you want to see some of uh, what these settings look like. I'll also include a link below to a video using these exact same settings, and I use these settings uh, every time I stream console. So, talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoy. Happy streaming!